Terry Jefferson is an 18-year-old senior at Law, Government, and Community Service Magnet High School in Queens, New York. Like most girls her age, she's looking forward to graduation and her senior prom. But Terry has had more than the usual milestones to mark her passage into young adulthood. That's because she's had to overcome a life-threatening obstacle, one that her mother, Darlene, remembers learning about vividly. About 11 o'clock in the morning, I get a phone call from the doctor. And he goes, oh, Ms. Jefferson, um, I need for you to come in to talk about Terry's test. Imagine being told your daughter has stage three ovarian cancer. A diagnosis quite rare because ovarian cancer is usually associated with older women, not teenagers. How are you? Fine. Dr. Eva Chalice is a gynecologist who practices at two medical centers on Long Island, New York. Huh? Ovarian cancer rarely occurs before mid-30s. Typically the incidence or the number of patients who are diagnosed um, increases from mid-30s on and begins to level off only after the woman has reached the age of 85. Darlene would have to break the devastating news to her only daughter. I said to her, I said, Terry, um, it just says, it says that you have cancer. And she looked at me and she goes, I have cancer? What are you talking about? It was basically a normal day until she told me and then, you know, I had to deal with it. Terry first went to the doctor because she was experiencing bloating and unusual fluid in her abdomen. She had no idea these symptoms pointed to the existence of cancer. Overnight, her life changed dramatically. Before, it was homework and hanging out with friends. Now, it was doctor's appointments and medical tests. Dr. Chalice had to prepare Terry for the profound impact her disease and its treatment would have on her future. That surgery was likely to result in having to remove her tubes and ovaries, having to go through uh, premature menopause, and then also not being able to ever have any children. So as you can imagine, that was a very lengthy visit and uh, a very trying one for everyone. Terry had an emergency hysterectomy. Doctors had to remove her ovaries and fallopian tubes in order to extract the cancer. Her recovery from surgery was tough and complicated by her bout with premature menopause. If your body says that you're gonna go through it, you're gonna go through it no matter what you take. She missed the second half of 11th grade, but fought to keep up on her homework with tutors. In September, she returned to school, just in time for her senior year. I was kind of happy just to be able to get out of my house and start trying to live a normal life, even though my life will never be normal again. Terry is grateful to the doctors for saving her life, but she can't help but reflect on what the cancer has robbed her of. Yeah, I, I am happy that I'm alive, but there are so many things that I could have been happy about, but because of the fact that I had cancer, it took that you know choice away. I'm trying to deal with that. But Terry's struggle is not over. Because she developed cancer at such a young age, chances are she has a genetic mutation that puts her at high risk for other types of cancer. Women with ovarian cancer and women with breast cancer are both at increased risk for the other type of cancer. Only a small percentage of cancers are hereditary, caused by an inherited genetic mutation. Two genes that are identified in most hereditary breast and ovarian cancers are known as BRCA1 and BRCA2. Both genes are instrumental in regulating cell growth, and when one or both becomes abnormal, cells may grow into cancer. If a woman is thought to have more than 10% risk of having a genetic mutation, it is considered medically appropriate for her to be tested. Terry's mother suspected her daughter did inherit a gene mutation from her cancer family tree. She had two aunts with breast cancer and a grandmother with ovarian cancer. So when Terry was genetically tested, the result was no surprise. She just told me that I did have the gene and it didn't really affect me because, to honestly tell you the truth, I already knew that I didn't have it. There's no way you can get ovarian cancer 
at 16 and not have some sort of trait in your family that will give you cancer. Doctors say Terry will have to be carefully monitored for breast cancer or other cancers all her life, but she seems incapable of feeling sorry for herself. I mean, everybody has to keep an eye on yourself, but I have to, you know, have both eyes like wide open, being aware of every little thing. In the meantime, Terry is getting on with her life. I'm just glad that I'm able to be here and go to my senior prom and graduate and go on to college and do everything else I want in life because, you know, there was a point in time in my life when, you know, nobody was sure whether I would be able to do all those things. So it's like, okay, well, I can do all this stuff, but, you know, I also had to overcome a lot of things to get to this point.